Hi fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In my last video you would have seen me use the laser shoe attachment to make this here, the round to it. In this video I'm going to use the laser shoe attachment again but this time I'm going to engrave a photograph into wood using freely available software to generate the g-code we need to do it. So sit back and relax as I show you how to engrave a photo into wood. So I'm starting this project off in the normal manner. I put my stock on the table and just squared it up to the table. And now I'm going to bring the laser shoe in and I'm going to line up the little arrow here with the X I put in the center. With my pointer above the X, I can now take out my drill bit and set the height for the Z. I'll just bring it over here to the There we go. So that's now the correct height above the stock and the pointer is now directly above my X. I can now set Mac 3, Mac 3 to be directly above my X and now that I've done that I need to remember to get rid of the tape. It back to the origin and we're ready to machine this. I'm going to be generating my g-code file using free software packages. I'm starting with this one here called GIMP. It is a photo editing software and is freely available but you can use any photo editing software that you like. I've started by opening the image that I want to engrave and I'm going to go to selection tools and I'm going to select free select and I start by cutting out the photo that the section that I want to engrave of the photo. I don't want to engrave the entire background that'll take far too long. This will make it a lot quicker. So I'm going doing is just going around this here and just making points now once you get to this point here all you have to do is come across to the end point there click and that'll close it up for you now I need to go to select and invert and then by hitting the delete key it will change my background to white with the image now cut out and the background now white, I'm going to come over here and go image, scale image. And I'm going to pick 170 dots per inch. And I'm going to select, and down here in millimeters, the actual size that I want my completed engraving to be. In this case, I'm going to make it 8 inches or 200 millimeters and I'll just quickly scale that and there it is there. It's important that you scale it before changing it to our final bit pattern. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly go colors desaturate like that. Just, just change it to black and white and I'm now going to go into the curves tool and I'm going to adjust it to what I think it should be grayscale wise. I don't want it too dark, I don't want it too light, I want it to be just right if that's possible. So by shifting the curves thing here I can really make it white or really make it dark. So I'm just going to uh, sort of go somewhere here so that I've got sort of grayish tones here, a little bit of black and uh, We'll leave it like that. And then finally, I'm going to go into Image, Mode, Indexed. And we now need to change this to a 1-bit palette. So we need to collect, select Use Black and White 1-bit Palette. And we need to go Floyd Steinberg. And I use the normal one there. And I'm going to convert. What this does is it changes the pictures to dots. If I zoom in on this, 
you can see here the picture is now just made up of black and white dots and that gives us our shading then when we look at it from a distance it still pretty much looks black and white from here we can now save the file and you need to save it as a bitmap file so you need to export it and I'm going to export it and call it peter.bmp and just export and that's that done I've now opened my .g software and I've navigated to the picture I want to open and I've opened it here it is here now you'll notice when it opens that it looks pretty hideous here but if you actually uncheck this little box here it will no longer try and compress it into this box here but will show it to you as uh, you can just see the section that this here covers so that's what the final thing will area that will be printed but this is what it will actually look like when it's printed so let's look at some of the settings on here BMP allows us to open and import our bitmap file and it must be a one bit file as I created in GIMP POST is post processor and here I have created a laser shoe post processor so I'll just select that and op open it so that will now output correct G-code for my laser setup. The G-code button is used for saving the G-code when we're finished. Down here we can decide where we want our origin point to be and I've chosen it to be in the center of our stock. Here is what machining strategy I want to use. And I want to use a back and forth one but you can choose going from left to right or from right to left. Down here you can decide whether you're engraving dots or I assume this one here is engraving white. I don't know how you engrave white but this one here shows whether you want multiple dots to be done as a line and I've chosen that as an option. I've given it a tool number of tool number one and I've just set a spindle speed of 8000 I just left it as it was. I've got an X and Y feed rate of a thousand and a Z feed rate of fifteen thousand. Over here I'm not using these two settings but here my X and Y raster that determines what size the dot my laser makes and I've decided it makes a 0.15 millimeter dot. It seems to work fine so I've just left it at that. Save Z zero, uh, distance I've just set to zero. Uh, depth of minus one so when it's at minus one the laser will turn on when it's at zero uh, the laser will turn off over here uh, you have your accelerations and rapids and I've just filled these here in uh, using figures from my machine and I believe these are used to simply calculate the approximate time it will take to engrave and down here you can select what type of uh, M command you want I've just left it at M3 and M9, it doesn't seem to affect my machine. I've got my home position down here, X, Y and Z0. Over here we have the X and Y time uh, multiplier, so you can actually uh, put figures in here to try and give you an approximate uh, calculation time of how long it will take. So uh, now down here we have, I'm not sure what the tooltip is, uh, I think it actually just adds more uh, output information in the finally created file, uh, G-code file, giving you information on settings and things. So we have over here, we can see our actual image size here, and we can see what size our final cutout will be. Now you'll note that I uh, originally changed the dot per inch on mine to 1. Uh, 170 dots per inch when I was mod uh, modifying it in GIMP and that is where this here comes in the 0.15 if I divide 25.4 which is one inch 
by 0 0.15 millimeters, I get a figure of about 169 point and uh, a little bit there. Effectively 170. And that's why I put 170 dots per inch into GIMP when I was doing this file here. And as you can see, I wanted 200. I'm at 200.8, so that's close enough for me. If I wanted to be really accurate, I could actually go and work out the dots per inch to the decimal point and put that in, and then I'd get exactly the size uh, output I want. But like I said, this is close enough for me uh, for this little job here. So next what I do is create the G code, and I'm just going to choose to put it where I want, and I'm just going to call it peter.txt. And there we are, the G code is now saved. So here is the output that .g has given us the G code. And it's got a header in there that it's uh, the .g program and it's optimized for the laser shoe. Uh, the name of the file that we're cutting, the extents of our X and Y movements, and Z movements as well. In this case, Z represents uh, our laser on and off, our, our C movement. Uh, down here we've got uh, that turns the laser on, turns the laser off and uh, sets the laser shoe to zero position and then initiates a tool change command. Same as what we did on our um, round to it engraving files. Uh, it also then comes up with a message saying turn laser on. Once you hit the start key it will start the engraving process. And that's really all there is to it. Take this file over to your machine, put it in, and let it run. Well, let's have a look at the final product. Three and a half hours of engraving, and more than half a million lines of G-code. So, there we have it, the completed laser engraving. Not quite what I expected, but it'll do. One of the things I've sort of found about laser engraving of photos is that it seems to be a bit of a black art. Depending on how much you fiddle with the photo in post-production, uh, the settings you set your laser to uh, in the .g software and all the rest of it, feeds, speeds, all the rest of it, the wood type you're using, the grain that the wood has and all the rest of it, you just end up with different uh, results on different woods. So the best thing to do is to play. Find out what your machine's capable of, how it works, what works best for you. And best of all, have fun. There's no point doing this if you're not having fun. I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can download the .g software as well as an English translated manual done by a gentleman by the name of Tweaky. I'm also going to put another link to a software package called Pick Engrave. One of the guys there, Jeff, introduced me originally to the concept of adding a laser to a CNC machine, and uh, his work is just phenomenal. So go and check out uh, the website and have a look at some of Jeff's work. It's just absolutely super, superb. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.